Welders, cutters, solders, and brazers join, repair, and cut metal parts and products. In this video, we will go over what they do, the job market, what kind of money they make, and the top industries and metro areas. Coming up. Hey everybody, my name is Stephen Hack and this is Career Watch, a YouTube channel focused on bringing you the latest, most up-to-date statistics on different careers. We have weekly videos on job statistics, salary statistics, and other general career information. If you enjoy this video, feel free to give us a like to support this channel. Welding is the most common way of joining metal parts. In this process, heat is applied to metal pieces, melting and fusing them. Welders are experts in welding and work in a variety of industries from car racing to manufacturing. Cutters, on the other hand, use heat to cut and trim metal objects to specific dimensions. So while welders focus on joining metals, cutters focus on cutting and trimming metal objects. Cutters can dismantle large objects like ships, railroad cars, and airplanes. Solders and brazers use heat to join two or more metal objects together. Risk of burns are significant as well as inhaling toxic fumes in these four different roles. With the use of new technology and proper protection, the risks of injury can be greatly reduced. Welders, cutters, solders, and brazers work in a wide variety of different industries. Ideally, we would separate these out into four different groups, but unfortunately, the government provides statistics for the four groups together rather than individually. So here is the employment breakdown. For welders, cutters, solders, and brazers, 63% work in manufacturing, 6 work as specialty trade contractors, 6% are self-employed, 4% work in repair and maintenance, and 3% work for merchant wholesalers. Next, let's take a look at the historical job market. There's been quite a bit of volatility in the number of welder, cutter, solder, and brazer jobs over the past 20 years. In the year 1999, there were 410,040 jobs. From the year 2000 to 2015, there was a lot of gains and losses in the number of jobs. Many people will attribute this to outsourcing and automation. In 2018, the government recorded 389,190 total jobs. This is 20,850 jobs fewer than in 1999 but it is much higher than in 2010 when there were 314,260 jobs. So there has been quite a bit of job volatility for welders, cutters, solders, and brazers over the past 20 years. Job growth has been severely limited. The next question is, will this continue? Next, let's take a look at the job forecast. The government is estimating a gain of 3% of jobs for this group of professionals from 2018 to 2028. The average occupation, on the other hand, is expected to rise by 5%. Next, let's take a look at what welders, cutters, solders, and brazers earn. In 1999, the average wage was recorded at $27,870. By the year 2018, this average wage had risen to $44,360. So wages rose for welders, cutters, solders, and brazers by $16,870 over a period of 20 years. And these wage numbers look a lot different when broken out by industry. These are the five highest paying industries for welders, cutters, solders, and brazers. The highest paying industry is electric power generation, transmission, and distribution with an average wage of $80,760. The second highest is natural gas distribution with an average wage of $78,970. Number three is pipeline transportation with an average wage of $75,609. Number four is research and development and number five is petroleum and coal products. Notice that four out of the five highest paying industries for welders, cutters, solders, and brazers are all in the energy industry. Finally, let's explore which metro areas are best for welders, cutters, solders, and brazers across the United States. The average wage is around $45,000 per year, but certain metro areas appear to pay much more than this. This list considers cost of living, number of jobs, and the average local wage. Number five on this list is the Minneapolis, Minnesota metro area. There's 4,420 jobs, and the average wage is $47,460, which is over $3,000 above the national average. Number four is the Seattle, Washington metro area. There's 4,090 jobs, and the Seattle average wage is $52,970, which is over $8,000 above the national average. Number three on this list is the Houston, Texas metro area. Houston really stands out because it has so many jobs for people in this occupation, over 18,000 jobs. The average wage in Houston is also $50,100, which is $5,740 above the national average. Number two on this list is the Baton Rouge, Louisiana metro area. There's over 3,000 jobs, and the average wage is actually $64,000, which is almost $20,000 above the national average. Number one on this list is Lake Charles, Louisiana metro area. There's over 2,000 jobs, and the Lake Charles average wage is $65,410, which is over $20,000 above the national average. Are you interested in becoming a welder, cutter, solder, or brazier? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video, and I will see you next time.